Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Hello. For the last uh, several videos from Central Presbyterian Church, we've been taking a look at places in the Bible. And today I would like to talk about something that affects every place, and that is peace. Jerusalem is the city of peace, yet we know that peace is very elusive for human beings. It is not always present. War, conflict, broken relationships, dissolution, they are very often the order of the day. And human beings strive in many ways for peace. Nations strive for peace. Individuals do. Now the Bible tells us that the source of our peace is Jesus our Lord. In Ephesians 2.14 we read, For he is our peace, for he has made one, and broke down the middle wall of partition. So the dividing wall has been broken down and we are one with God because we have peace with God in Christ. Jesus in the upper room spoke to the disciples in John's Gospel chapter 14 and said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We know that when Jesus approached the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday as he came down the Mount of Olives, and as he came down, he and his disciples saw the temple that was not far away, and the disciples had commented earlier on the beauty of the temple. And as he sees the temple, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, we read, he approached Jerusalem. He saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known even this day the things that make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. The city of Jerusalem did not know the things that made for peace, and Jesus said that the time would come, and that time came in about 40 years, when not one stone of the temple would be left on another, as it would be destroyed by the Roman general Titus after the great Jewish rebellion around the year 70 A.D. We know that Jesus saw that the people of Jerusalem, the people of his day, didn't know the things that made for peace. The Roman authorities, the empire, they certainly didn't know. They had what they called the Pax Romana, but it was an occupying army, and their power was based on intimidation, the collection of taxes, injustice. Now we know that the religious leaders of, the, of Israel at that time, the Sadducees, they were interested in their power, their position, their heritage. And the religious people of his day, those who took themselves very seriously, the Pharisees, they were interested in their rules and regulations. None of these things made for peace. And Jesus knew that. What are the things that make for peace? We have strived as human beings over many centuries to find out what they are. We have the Nobel Peace Prize. It's been given out for about 125 years. Various presidents of the United States have been recipients of that award, but it certainly hasn't brought the world any closer to peace. After World War I, we had the League of Nations. After World War II, we had the United Nations as we have it today. Yet we know these international organizations really have not brought peace. In the 1920s, the Kellogg-Briand Pact was signed between leading nations of the world, France, Germany, the United States, where they essentially attempted to outlaw war, but it didn't work. And even though that pact is still in effect today, we still have much conflict. Reconciliation seems far away and unattainable, often personally within our lives, within our families, within churches, within nations. We look across the world today, and do we know the things that make for peace? And Jesus stands over us and weeps at what he sees. The Bible tells us that there are many false claims of peace. The prophet Jeremiah said, 
the leader said, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Prophet Ezekiel said the same thing. The leaders of Judah, the leaders of the people, do not address the problems. They cover over the wounds. They make all kinds of agreements and alliances. They are guilty of crimes and exploitation. And yet they say, peace, peace. That's not peace. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom. It is a very broad word. It means blessing. It means being complete. It means totality, entirety, prosperity. It is good things bestowed upon humanity. That is shalom. And Jesus knew that there was not shalom in Jerusalem as he looked over the city on Palm Sunday. And we know that there is not shalom in the world today. Peace is not a speech by a politician saying, I promise that if I'm elected, I will bring peace. An American president of a previous generation said that his policies would deliver a generation of peace. A handshake and a photo op is not peace. As politicians fly around the world talking about the peace process, shaking hands, and yet that's not peace. A piece of legislation passed is not peace. Law does not bring peace. A truce is not a peace. A ceasefire is not a peace. Peace is something that comes in Christ our Lord, because Jesus is the Messiah, and he is our peace. The prophets understood very well that peace was something that was founded in the work of God and founded in the faithfulness of people as they respond to the presence of God and the work of God in the world. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 28 of his prophecy says, Therefore hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, you who rule people in Jerusalem, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken our shelter. Therefore, says the Lord God, behold, I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and whoever believes will not be in haste. I will make justice the wine and righteousness the plumb wine. Hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. You see, the people of the world, generation after generation, have made a covenant with death. They have made an agreement with Sheol, the place of the dead. Nations continue to do so today. It's happened for thousands of years. It's happening today. It's happening in the Ukraine-Russia conflict. It's happening in Gaza as Hamas and the Israeli government lock horns, both of them stating positions that are far, far from shalom. It's in Myanmar as the Rohingya refugees seek solace somewhere in the world. It's in the Sudan with millions of refugees with disease and starvation on the rise. It's in the Congo. Generations of war continue to take a horrible toll. It's at the United States border with immigrants fleeing all kinds of horrible situations, attempting to find some refuge. The evidence is clear and the results are horrifying, but there is an alternative. And that is Christ our Lord, the Messiah of God, the Prince of Peace who has come into the world. The barriers have been torn down, and there is a program of life that has been given to us. It is given to us in that Christ is our peace. And as Christ is our peace, therefore, we need to incorporate into our lives and into the world the attributes of God revealed to us in the Old Testament again and again. Justice, righteousness, truth, loving kindness, faithfulness, mercy, compassion, and love. That is where peace is to be found in Christ our Lord and in implementing by the content of our lives, by the actions of our lives, and by the words that we speak, the truth of God as revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. The poet-songwriter Leonard Cohen said in one of his songs long ago, there ain't no cure for love. There's not a cure for the love of God that has been spread into the world. And God's love is given to us in Christ, and it will continue to spread and advance until truly His realm, His reign, does come across the face of this earth. Let us pray. Our Lord, we thank You for the peace of Christ. We thank You 
that the bridge has been gapped, that the barriers are down, that life has been given to us. We ask that by your Holy Spirit, you will enable us to appreciate and to incorporate the peace of Christ and the program of God in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpcteranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Teranum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.